Hi guys, Yahweh's prepared a PowerPoint presentation for you all about creation and Nibiru. The earth is the center of the universe which Yahweh created in the beginning, likened to a woman's womb, your mother Amma, her womb like any mother conceiving of the father. Yahweh the father or Allah created the earth for his offspring mankind's pleasure and mankind he created for himself so mankind is the father's pleasure to accomplish this atoms were created by the dark matter of the universe which makes up 90 percent of the universe and from within it the mother Amma and time consisting of light and magnetic fields caused atoms to exist as the building blocks within time then within it the earth was placed to manifest the offspring of God. From the interdependence of light and matter, all building blocks caused Yahweh's will to be, to exist in a physical realm where mankind could be manifest as the offspring of the Father via your mother. Now Israel was placed on the earth to carry out Yahweh's will. The angels constructed innumerable structures worldwide for man's pleasure to demonstrate to the emerging baby to learn the wonders and conclude God created it via his angels. Israel consisted of 12 tribes. Yahweh placed over them watchers, angels, but man has free will and chose to keep the earth for themselves, for free will is very costly, and collectively man swarms into the occult, fed from the spiritual realm where the fallen angels destroyed in the flood were allowed to influence man, and in so doing the priesthood became devoured by greed and lust. Yahweh came as a man predicted 4,000 years ago by the Hindu Vedas that he, Yahweh, Yahweh, Jehovah, Allah, would come as Jesus, born of the virgin womb of Mary, via the royal lineage from David, his earthly father, Joseph, within Mary, the most royal woman or the royal tribe of Judah. Prophecy came to man via the prophets then Muhammad, then finally his offspring, who were the twelve Mahdi, all of them murdered by the Jews and Rome, and then each of their messages were included in what would become the Quran. Their holy words altered to confuse the followers of Muhammad, the inheritors of the earth, via Iran. The Bible is similar. The Jews had infiltrated Rome, the Gentile nation surrounded by the ten tribes of Israel under Solomon, a black witch who founded Freemasonry and its various levels and death oaths. The ten tribes were totally consumed by evil. They had set free the fallen angels from the spiritual prison created for them prior to the flood of Noah. The flood was caused by Mars colliding with the earth, pouring all of its oceans onto the earth. All offspring of Cain and the fallen angels were spared by the free will of Ham, the son of Noah bringing forth his corrupt genes of Cain and the angels. In so doing, their fate was sealed, as Enoch was shown how the earth would produce wonders via the western Israel nations of Europe, that originated as the ten tribes of Israel, north of Judah and Jerusalem. Assyria had conquered Solomon's tribes, scattering them via the trade routes to settle in Europe. Judah survived being the royal tribe spoken to by myself via the prophets. They set upon continually via the Babylonian priests, the Pharisee and Sadducee, that had infiltrated the temple of Yahweh in Jerusalem, which was rebuilt by the true priests in 444 BC for Yahweh, 
replacing Solomon's temple, which was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar in 586 BC. And this structure, that is the newly rebuilt temple for Yahweh, was paid for by Persia. The royal line of Judah had split when Judah, leaving the Middle East, moved to Ireland in 1521 BC. The genetic line of the kings of Judah from King David descended through Ireland to Scotland to emerge via King William I of Scotland when his offspring via the Golightly and Marshall lineages would eventually migrate to Australia, which is Ephraim, and here the line of Habsburg, Golightly, Marshall and Maloney produced the true king of Israel, which is Yahweh himself, the Christ. Now, here's Yahweh's simple diagrams of Nibiru and the accompanying planets. These, of course, in the angelic realm are Gabriel and the seven angels of the Revelation. Everything is symbolic. A 3,600-year orbit, uh, this being the top view. As the planets orbit closer, the dwarf is pulled around the sun. Here, here it is. It's been hidden from the earth because the earth has been on the other side of the sun. And the white hole from the sun is the singularity of the creation, if you like, continually pouring forth. Now it's locked into the earth. We have crossed over the equatorial line of the Milky Way galaxy, December 11th, 2011 at 11.11, Australian Eastern Time. And that's when the moon flipped 180 degrees. The red dwarf star held by magnetic pull of the white hole which pours through from the no time heavenly realm of dark matter. Now the iron mass is not affected by orbital mechanics and remains close to the sun's surface aligned with the seven planets locked in to the 3600 year orbit. The red dwarf has always been with the sun but pointed towards its seven planets and has been on the other side of the sun for 3600 years and has now seen from the earth as the Nibiru planets have locked onto the earth. Now remembering that time has been out by 375 days so the whoop de doo of December 21st 2012 it's already been accomplished and it was always about the crossing over back to the north side of the Milky Way galaxy. Now, Judgment Day, the great fist of Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall falls. The 200 million from the Eastern Orthodox Christian Church to assist Iran in establishing a world government and the rebuilding of Yahweh's temple in Jerusalem under the command of the King of Kings, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. The King of Kings, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall, who is Yahweh, Allah, call him what you like, who has judged the nations and chooses Iran and Russia as the world government of the kingdom of God. Further, the Bible states that the kingdom would be taken away from the nation, failing to do the will of love via benevolence to all nations and given to a Gentile nation and that nation being Iran. reiterating I just want to go over for anybody who is watching from the Christian Revelation 312 the new name of God it's all revealed in the numbers Brian Leonard go lightly Marshall has an English geometry of 312 if you go to the Revelation chapter 3 verse 12 you will see there it talks about the new name of God in the time of the end. He is the one that has to reveal it to a deceived mankind who have fallen to the Judeo-Christian beast, the Zionist serpent. Okay, reiterating, Iran chosen to rebuild the temple of Yahweh because Iran has been judged and chosen as a nation to inherit the kingdom of God assisted by Russia to build that kingdom upon the earth for all mankind. The kingdom of God was taken away from Israel before the cross. Jesus knew then 
they would fail. Elizabeth is the whore of the revelation. She was to bring paradise to the earth for all the world. And as you can see, she lives deliciously and wealthily, as they all do, having decided to keep the earth for themselves and is why she is fast-tracking what she would do to five billion people, that is, turn you to dust. Not going to happen. Iran recognising Brian Leonard go lightly Marshall Habsburg as God, the returned Lord Jesus Christ, who was and is Jesus, the Father, Yahweh. And any nation that opposes Christ or places any nation in harm's way, its head will be crushed to powder, as were the two CIA tunnels destroyed by 19.7 atmospheres of air pressure deflating after the doors were blown off by the pressure followed by 13 others. Russia replaces the USA and Iran replaces Israel and Germany replaces the throne of David and destroys the throne of Elizabeth II. Lucifer works for Yahweh. Now, of course, he could have destroyed it at any time. However, the fallen angels had to be controlled. It is the tempter, and therefore all Freemasons are forgiven and disannulled, all oaths sworn to the Zionist devil by an initiation that covertly man has imagined, provided they love Jesus. The royal descendant from Muhammad were all men who wrote the Quran, his descendants reincarnating after each generation lost their Imam Mahdi by their murder. Then the Talmud Jews infiltrating Islam, linguistic scholars doctored the Prophet's prophecies. Then another body of Muhammad spoke through another of the holy descendants, armed with the soul of Muhammad to be poisoned or beheaded. The final incarnation of Muhammad is today Mahmud Ahmadinejad, who was born on October 28th, and this was the date in 2011 when the earth population reached 7 billion, and a date predicted by the Mayan calendar. In Russia, the reincarnation of Michael Romanov is Vladimir Putin, reborn, who was also Nikolai Romanov II, 18th of May, 1868. He died on July 17, 1918, murdered by the Zionists. Vladimir Putin is Saint Nicholas, the passion bearer of the Russian Orthodox Church. And as the former King of Poland, Yahweh has ordered President Putin to move into Poland and liberate the Polish people from the Zionist. Russia is Orthodox Christian, who are the 200 million from the East, that overcomes the Zionist Western Christian nations under the great whore Elizabeth II. Under the Romanovs of the 17th and 18th centuries, there was no change in attitude towards the Judaized Khazars, who scorned Russian civilization and stubbornly refused to enter the fold of Christianity. Peter the Great, his reign from 1682 to 1725, spoke of the Jews as rogues and cheats. That's from the Popular History of the Jews by H. Gretz. New York, The Jordan Publishing Company, 1919, 1935, Volume 6 by Max Raising, page 89. Quoting Elizabeth, reign 1741 to 1762, expressed her attitude in the sentence, From the enemies of Christ, I desire neither gain nor profit. And that, folks, in a nutshell, is what it's all about.